Emmanuel. We've been singing it all Advent season. It's our great desire for God to be with us. And it's a desire that's not only ours, it's a desire that is not only this long-standing tradition within Christianity, but it's a desire that is a long-standing tradition with the Jewish people as well. So this longing that has spanned generations and cultures and places for God to be with us, not just in some single event at one point in history, although that as well, but that our desire in our daily lives for God to be with us, Emmanuel. Inasmuch as it is our desire, our great longing individually and as a people, even more so, it's God's desire. I think sometimes we forget that. We don't remember. And what we've been hearing in this Advent season and what we've been celebrating is exactly that. God desires to be close to us even more than we do. And so God labors and works hard to get to us. The incarnation and this scene today with Mary and Elizabeth and the visitation is their response to that great desire. What they lay out for us is how to respond. And it's a desire that doesn't always, on God's part, he doesn't always do it, God doesn't always do it in a way we would expect. Again, long-standing tradition. Jacob is not the oldest twin. David is not the oldest, strongest, smartest brother. Bethlehem, Ephrathah, is not Jerusalem. God comes in ways unexpected consistently th throughout Israel's story. It's an underdog story. We always like the underdog. There's a romance about that. So it's God's great desire, and it's God's great desire that happens in ways unexpected and in little ways, in small ways. Mary and Elizabeth, Zechariah and Joseph understand that. They're the prototype of our response to this desire on God's part. To say yes, simply to say yes. Mary is not noted for anything. She's young. Joseph, this good man, does what he does. He's not part of any royal line that's in power at the time. He's not an expected quarter from which the Messiah would come. Zechariah can't even believe it. That this great desire on God's part is, gonna, is going to have effect in numerous ways in the world. And it's going to be life-giving. And Elizabeth and Zechariah, not for them. And so when the word comes to Zechariah, he struggles to understand it. How can this be? No, come on. And so he gets to ponder for the gestation of Elizabeth. They say yes. Even John in utero, we see today, in joy is saying yes. There's this response that we then have to follow. And what we'll see in the Christmas season, what we've seen in this Advent season, in all of these readings from the, the infancy narratives in Matthew and Luke's gospel, action on God's part and a response. And we'll continue to see that response with Anna and with Simeon with the shepherds, the whole host of angels in heaven are overflowing with joy at this. Magi respond. Even Herod is going to respond in a very brutal, ghastly way that's unimaginable. We are called to respond to this initiative, this inspiration of God, not just then, but now. 
The ways that God enters into our lives in simple ways, in ways that aren't expected, ways that aren't grand and, and broad gestures that are obvious to see. Those little movements of inspiration in our heart of hearts that call us to say yes. And the result is the joy. The joy of Mary and Elizabeth. The joy that I think we can safely speculate must have been Zechariah's as well, watching all of this. Just watching and contemplating and pondering because he couldn't do anything else. In this Advent season, we tap into a long-held desire for God to be close, to be Emmanuel. The greatest news is that it's God's desire even more than ours.